prepare to pledge, hand over the heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Father God, we celebrate today that we're alive and you put the very breath of life in us. Lord, we want to gather and celebrate your name. People come together. Here we go.
Good morning. It's good to see you. I pinch myself every morning when I come here that the breakfast is made. We have coffee. We have oatmeal. If you're my age, you eat oatmeal. You don't eat regular stuff. You eat oatmeal. But anyway, and then I never have to worry about Dan being here and the people doing worship. I just don't have to worry about any of that. And that is such a blessing whenever you're involved with any ministry, right? And so... And I just want to thank every one of you that make a choice to get up and come here in the morning. You know, when I climbed out of bed this morning at 4.30, I said, oh my goodness, do I hurt. <laughs> but then I get rolling and I get here and I just get, well, I just feel so good. So again, welcome guys. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to ask Jim Hypock to come up. We've got some people we need to pray for. So, 
we've got some guys that are sick. I'm going to ask my buddy Jim to come up <clears throat> and uh, and pray for him. This one guy that's named Mike Berry, you don't know him. He doesn't come on Friday morning, but he's been coming to the church a long time. He had a stroke a number of years ago. He made it through that one. We're here on Wednesday night. He kind of crashed, and I think he had another stroke, and he's not doing well. Bottom line, he's not doing well. So keep him in prayer, even though you don't know him, and these other folks, you'll know who I'm talking about. Okay? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, you, Book of John tells us you're looking for worshipers. Well, here we are at Calvary Chapel, East Anaheim. We are men who worship you. Lord, we have opportunity to worship you and pray and give you our hearts, whether we're in the valley, whether we're climbing up the hill, whether we're on the summit, or whether we're backslidden back down. So Lord, we are worshipers, and we are looking for you to enter our hearts and to pave the way for where you would have us go. And Lord, we have opportunities to pray for our, our fellow brothers, and we lift up Tucker, who's starting a new career in the police force. Lord, I pray you would give him, first of all, protection, and give him the joys of his heart that he's doing what you made him to do, that you created within him a desire for law and order, for peace, for all the things that um, are, are uh, against man's will. Man's will is evil. But, Lord, we know that you have placed him there to uh, represent you. So we're asking, Lord, that you would give him the strength and the power and the desire to continue on to uh, finish the race that he started, to finish well and under your protection and your guidance. And as well, we lift up Gary Wyman. Lord, he's been such a servant in Dovetail Ministries. And, Lord, he's uh, not doing this alone, but he is the, the kingpin that keeps things moving, and he relies on you. So, Lord, as he's in the uh, recovery bed, I guess he's home now, Lord, and he's, uh, he's in need of just rest and restoration and that you would restore his body. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you that you, you, he went through this um, uh, heart device uh, uh, that uh, that was successful, but he came down with the pneumonia. None of this surprises you. And he's healed from that, but he's uh, looking forward now to a valve replacement. Lord, we ask that you would be with the doctors, not only be their wisdom, but be their hands. Make the decisions for them, the right decisions, the right uh, timing. Lord, would you just uh, be the one who, who leads that concert that all the nurses and all the doctors would uh, be in agreement because it's... Uh, uh, they're going to rely on you, and we're going to pray that uh, if they don't know you, they would come to know you because of uh, Gary's faith and because of his stamina in Christ. Lord, we pray for uh, uh, his wife as well. Uh, many times, uh, husbands or wives go down this trail, and um, they have a spouse, and the spouse is hurting just as much. So I pray you just soften Nancy's heart and give her the peace that she needs to be a comforter to her husband. And Lord, we, uh, uh, we pray for Rich Moore, who is also uh, a great servant, providing for the needy. Uh, he is um, not doing well, you know all the details. But Lord, as he goes through his trials, uh, would you just uh, give him the peace, knowing that you're right there with him, that uh, you have allowed this to happen, that we all age and get old, and uh, Lord, there's different uh, doors we open and different arenas we enter. But Lord, uh, this is one that uh, we know you are in charge of. And he gives his life for you. He's shown that he's given his life for you by uh, what you put on his heart to provide for those who are less fortunate. So I would pray that he and his family would uh, just be content and knowing and uh, they'd be comforted knowing that their king is uh, in charge of all things. And Lord, we pray for Mike Barry uh, as well uh, with his health. Lord, it's, uh, I don't know the man well, but you know him intimately. You created him and created him for a purpose. So whatever stage of life he is in, I pray you would be with him, comfort him as well, and all those around him. There's always something in it for each of us, whether we're the one who is in need or whether we're a friend or whether we're an uh, observer. Uh, there's something in it for all of us to learn that all our power, all our strength, all our devotion is uh, to Jesus Christ, and we just rely on him constantly. So let every breath that we take, uh, let us understand that it's uh, just a gift from God. So Lord, no matter what stage any of us are in, would you be with, it, with us? Let us be thankful 
Let us not be afraid of evil that is around us today. And let us be, have, take comfort in the fact that you have everything under your control. There's nothing that happens without your sovereign will or permissive will. And we are going to be obedient to that and uh, not be afraid. So, Lord, we lift these uh, issues up to you and ask that you would bless them all. Bless these men of Calvary Chapel of East Anaheim, that they're men of God and they're looking to their source for all the strength and all the wisdom that you can give us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jim. So, guys, uh, two of those men on that list uh, have been just unbelievable to this fellowship and to me personally. And Rich Moore, when he had Dead to Health Ministry, he provided so much food for those people in need. I just, I, I, I just give thanks for him every day when he was there. And the same thing with Gary Wyman, what they've done to help those people that just don't have food. We need to keep them in prayer. They're both just, well, they're just very special in my mind. So tomorrow, Ted, Ted has a wonderful ministry. It's about how we're getting your fingernails dirty with, with some oil. And so he's having a meeting tomorrow morning. What time, Ed? 8 o'clock? 8 to 10. Come out. It's going to be in West Palm parking lot. And come out and if you've got a hot car, bring that out. If you like me, you just have a car, bring your car out. Okay. Come on up. Richard, you know, yeah, give him a hand. <laughs> Richard, uh, when this all started, and I had to try to figure out how we're going to get the word of God out, Richard stepped up to the plate, and if you listen back in those days online, he, every week he gave us a message. And then this guy right here taking my something, he came about in our lives and he let us go online. So I owe such a debt of gratitude, and we all do, to these two men where we could go online and, and share the word of God. So give them a hand, would you guys? And I, um, in bottom line, guys, we've got such bad things going on in this state. But you need to know kind of what's going on, where you can be praying. So don't run out real quick. Mark's not going to be long, but hang around after Richard's done and then Mark talks. Okay, you got it, buddy. Thank you. I would like to have one more hand of appreciation for a certain man by the name of Pastor Maury Evans. Yeah. So, uh, I know that he's going to call my wife and I'm going to be chided severely, but we are so blessed to have you as our leader uh, of the men's ministry, and uh, um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate him so much. Well, you know, when Pastor Maury asked me to, um, Pastor Maury asked me to come and talk to you guys, and I have to say it's kind of weird to actually see faces instead of a camera sitting at me. Um, and I, I, I was sitting there thinking about what I should talk about, and, and really the topic I'm going to talk about for the next three weeks isn't that different from what I talked to you guys about when we were going through this lockdown together. Um, all around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. And their tears are filling up their glasses, no expression, no expression. Hide my head, I want to drown my sorrows, no tomorrow, no tomorrow. And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you, because I find it hard to take. When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. Strange to open a Bible study to a song written by Tears for Fears in 1982. But tell me that those words in that song don't apply to 2020. You look around this world and what do we see? We see chaos, confusion. We see COVID. 
we see man running here and there, desperately trying to figure out what to do, and never succeeding. It's a mad world. It's a, it's a very, very mad, our mad world, guys, is trying to invade our lives. Am I not right? I mean, I'm looking at your faces and, and I'm saying these words and I can see pain on your face as you watch the, the world swirling around us. At least, squawk, squawk, squawk. Uh, um, at least, and I know it's pretty impressive. No. Duck. Uh, no, that's goose. Um, but the problem here is, is that the world wants us to not move forward. Brothers, I'm sitting here looking at us and I'm going, why shouldn't we, guys? What are we to do? What are we to say? The world would have us surrender and kneel, right? They want us to kneel to what they want to say. I, uh, I like this t-shirt that we're ordering for the bookstore. It says, I, I, I kneel for the cross and I stand for the flag. Um, and I like that shirt, guys. And yet, what does the world have to offer us, guys? Worn out places, worn out faces, going nowhere, no expression, no tomorrow. But is that it? Is that all that we have to offer to you guys? And I would hope with one voice, we would all stand and say, no, that is not what we have. That is not what we're about. Can I tell you what we are about? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through the first part of verse 8 says this. Love is, you guys know this, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. And it is not jealous. Love does not brag. And it is not arrogant. does not act uh, unbecoming. It is not, it does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account wrong suffered. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but what? What do we rejoice in, men? The truth. The truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and then the key point in that whole section is what? Love what? Say it with me. Love never fails. I mean, the world doesn't want... You know what the world does when we say that? La, 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 la. We'd rather take care of it ourselves. And where does that get them? Where we are today. The passage that we looked at, if you look at that passage, do you realize, I'm, I'm kind of a numbers guy when I look at the Bible. I like looking at numbers. How many things are there? There are eight affirmatives and there are eight um, points where we're not supposed to be doing. Eight and eight. Does anybody know what that number eight is all about? In the Bible, what does, goodness. Does anybody know what the number eight is? New beginnings, that's right. Why, why do we believe that it's a new beginnings? Why do we worship on Sunday? Resurrection. Exactly. New beginnings. Guys, that passage is spoken to us, and I don't think it's an accident there are eight and eight, because I think both of those are representative of the fact that we have a new beginning. Do we have a new beginning, guys? Why? What is our new beginning? Who is our new beginning? Jesus, Jesus Christ. And the world doesn't want to see that, guys. And that passage in 1 Corinthians ends with that wonderful passage, guys. But now, what? Faith, hope, love. Abide, guys. Continue to tarry. These three. But the greatest of these is what? Now, love is the greatest. It's the largest. It's what the word means in the Greek. But don't miss out on the other two, because the other two are very critical for what's going on in the world today, guys. We're going to look at all three of those words, faith, hope, and love. But I want to do it in light of what <coughs> the world that we're sitting in today. We sit in a world where those three words 
need to be spoken a lot more often. We need a world, we need to be that light into a world that is very, very, very dark, guys. We need to be that light where the mad world can be taken hold of, guys. We will look at man's faith in himself versus the saving faith of Jesus Christ. We'll see man's chaos and hopelessness versus Jesus Christ who leads to hope. And then week three, man, man's continuing crisis versus the ultimate expression of God's perfect love, Jesus Christ. The point that I'm making there is guess what is the center of everything we're going to be talking about for the next three weeks? Jesus Christ. What has COVID-19 done to our country, to the world? I, the, we don't have enough time to go through all of it, guys. What has happened is, it, is there not an insane level of fear in the world today? Yes. An insane level, guys. Now, what has that caused that fear in the COVID? What is it about COVID that makes people fearful? Death. We, you, it's something you can't see, smell, taste, or handle, and yet it'll kill you. And what does the world want more than anything else right now? Answers. They are looking to man to explain what is going on. Man is looking for the wisdom of man to solve the problems of man. And until man provides the answer, fear runs rampant in the world. Do you want an example of what this fear looks like? Two months ago, everybody says, we're going to have a cure for COVID, and the stock market went through the roof. Yesterday, a doctor gets on TV and says, no, it'll probably be until next year. And guess what happened to the stock market? Crashed. Watch the stock market and not tell me that that's not an indicative picture of man's fears. By contrast, man's answers, guys, what is our faith in? What's our faith in, guys? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Now, let me ask you a question. Is our faith based in fear? Yes and no. <laughs> oh, one of those questions. It is based in a form of fear, right? Fear of the Lord, right? You know, Psalm 2, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice in trembling, right? That's a healthy fear. Because what is that? That is making sure that we understand God is God and we are not. That's a good place to be, guys. But our faith is not based on the spirit of fear of the unknown like COVID. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Guys, wait a second. Did you hear what I just read you? The fact that we... We don't have that spirit of fear that's out there. But it's, a, and it's not just an irrational, oh, there's a cliff coming, I'm going to go walk off it. You know, it's not like that, guys. It's because we have a sound mind. We have, we have love. We have power. What do we know? I'll tell you what we know. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb, according to Revelation 1.5. We are kings and priests, and we will rule and reign with Christ, according to Revelation 5.10. We will return with Christ when Jesus sets up his millennium Christ, uh, kingdom in Revelation 19.14. We are the bride of Christ, Revelation 21.9, and we will walk in and out of the New Jerusalem forever, according to Revelation 22.14. That's at the end of the book, and guys, I took a peek at the end of the book. Guess what? We win. Do, do you hear me, Christian? Do you understand? Do you notice that all of these promises are at the end of the book? There are things that are still out there, although we are washed with the blood of the land. Do we have a great future? No matter what COVID says, we have great hope. We have great opportunity. Romans 8, 15, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Did you hear what Paul says there? But we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? What do we cry? Abba. Abba, Father. 
Brothers, we need to live our lives by faith and not by bondage to fear. Brothers, we need to cover, we do not need to cower in fear, rather we need to walk in the glorious light of Jesus Christ. The secret of the Lord, according to Psalms 25, 14, is this, is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. What is our covenant? Guys, what has God promised us? There is a lot. I could stand here for an hour and a half and you guys could fire off all kinds of verses at me, giving me the promises of God, and I would be fine with me. I'd probably some of you guys would probably leave a little early, but there are, how many promises are there in the Bible? A lot. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard the different numbers. What is our covenant? What has Jesus promised us, guys? He says that, I have commanded you that, lo, I am with you, what? Even unto the, he is, is Jesus here today? Yes. Is he here in this courtyard? Yes. Is he here in your heart? Yes. What, and, and your heart, should it be troubled? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also, guys. In my Father's houses, house are what? And if it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, what? What will happen? Yeah, I will come and get... Yeah, he's coming back, guys. And I don't think he's going to be wearing a mask. <laughs> and there appears to be no answer to this COVID thing. What comfort is that? These things I have spoken unto you, being present with you, but the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, from whom the Father I will send in my name, he will teach you all these things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And here's the key, guys, because I'm closing up. Peace, I leave with you. The world has no peace. The world has no peace right now all you have to do is listen to talk radio and you can clearly see that there's no peace in this world but what do we have what has jesus given us no 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 just not peace his peace don't lose sight of that fact man can have peace from time to time they can have happiness from time to time but man's peace and man's happiness is fleeting. Look around the world today. But I would prefer to have his peace. We are not beholden to the world's answers. We are not beholden to the world for our peace, guys. Is your heart trouble? I pray that the Lord replace that spirit of fear with the truth that Jesus has saved you and that you are going to go home and be with him. This is just a whisper. This is just a vapor. Have you lost your peace? It's not lost, guys. It's just been crowded out. Come unto me, all you that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in the heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The world's faith is only good until the next bit of bad news. Saving faith in Christ, guys, is forever. Everything here speaks to our faith in Christ, giving us the victory over doubt and fear. And here's the question I want to close with, guys. Are you willing to shut out what the world passes as faith and accept the free grace and gift of His peace in your life let's pray lord we thank you for tonight today <laughs> today this morning and lord i uh, even thank you for the birds of the air <laughs> but lord i also thank you that you are the god of peace the god who gives us the peace that passes all understanding lord i pray that if there is a brother here who has a heart that is troubled or if there's a brother here whose family is troubled his wife is troubled lord i just ask that you would invade their lives in a supernatural way that they would have this peace that would pass all understanding even in the midst of the craziness of the world around us lord let us be light 
Let us be that beacon to the world that says, if you want peace, come here. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Mark, come on up, bud. Morning, guys. Good morning. I want to read something to you. This is from a, uh, uh, a mom that attends our church and has daughters in the public school system. Um, and this email went out to, I guess, a mom's group, and my wife received it and got permission to share this with you. I'm not going to mention her name, but let me just read this. <clears throat> So I need prayer for my daughter and some of her friends she goes to school with as well as our youth group at Calvary Chapel East Anaheim. Long story short, they are being bullied pretty bad because of their faith and now political beliefs. My daughter doesn't ever post about politics unless she is asked a direct question, but she will post scripture as it is relating to her life at the time. Last year, she had a friend group that included a transgender girl who identified as a boy, and a girl who decided to date him slash her. Sir, this, my daughter was always pretty open about not supporting their relationship, but always told them she loved them and did not judge them for their choices regarding that. She's never judged anyone for that, but anyone who knows her knows that she is a believer. So she is no longer friends with these two. These girls, along with a couple of other girls who used to go to our youth group with, used to go to their youth group with them, and one other girl in their old group have all decided that they are now bisexual. And ever since, they take every opportunity to post things about hating religion, hating God, and have taken every opportunity to call out my daughter and her friends as homophobic, etc. And now they are just saying things that I can't even repeat. It's a total mob mentality. This is the public school system today. Um, I'm holding a flyer that is prominently going out to public school groups uh, up in the Bay Area. It happens to be the Concord area. And it says, one says, the love is love youth dance. And it's being advertised at a women's club for ages 11 through 20. 11 through 20. The other one is an LGBTQ plus QSA, that's Queer Straight Alliance, plus GSA, which stands for Gay Straight Alliance. You're invited. Come to our schools, QSA, LGBT, QBTQ plus club. Do you want to meet other local school people like-minded in these clubs? You're invited again, ages 11 through 25. So these are groups that are swarming our public campuses, Gay Straight Alliance groups that are coming in. These are adults who are coming in and recruiting people on campus with the school administration's complete buy in to mentor people who are confused about their gender status or their sexual orientation to indoctrinate them into this worldview and this lifestyle do you guys remember proposition eight you remember that back in 2008 that was a ballot initiative to um, memorialize the traditional concept of marriage as between one man and one woman. Do you remember we won that ballot initiative? And what happened in the courts? Well, of course, they summarily turned it over. In fact, it was Judge Vaughn Walker um, who, who turned over the decision that, you know, marriage should be between any loving adults, consenting adults. That was basically the decision. Well, there was a dissenting judge in that particular case that uh, wrote a long opinion who basically was saying the arguments that are being made to justify same-sex marriage 
can also be made to justify all manner of sexual adult, consenting adults, legal relationships, including polygamy and polyamory. And in Massachusetts, just recently, they decided to legalize polyamorous relationships. So we're, what, 12 years later? But the storm is here, and it's coming. And now it's being pushed down to our children throughout the public school system. Assembly Bill 2218 was recently passed in our state legislature. It's called the Transgender Wellness and Equity Act. How many, how many of you have heard of this? Just a, a couple. What this does is it sends up a fund, a general fund, using your money, taxpayer money, to pay for therapies to help kids go from one gender to the next, including verbal therapies, art classes, off-campus classes, and if they need it, if they choose to do it, puberty blockers, and if they continue on those very long or insistence, cross-sex hormones. Do you know what happens if you're on a puberty block blocker like Lupron for any length of time? It can become irreversible. So puberty blockers, they, they block the pituitary gland. You, you know, your, your evolution into your sex at birth effectively stops. But even after a very short time, we're talking a matter of months, if a young woman is on these puberty blockers, her voice will irreversibly change. She will take on a male kind of a voice. And even if she decides this is not for me, I was born a girl, that's who I am, her voice will be that way for the rest of her life. But most of the people who get on these puberty blockers, if they start going down that path, particularly with the peer pressure in the schools and the medical community, they go on to cross-sex hormones, mainly testosterone. And you know what that leads to? This is even before transgender reassignment surgery. It leads to sterilization. Sterilization. So now California has set up a fund using our money to permanently sterilize our children. That's just one bill, one bill. Another bill that recently passed in this legislative cycle is Senate Bill 145. How many are familiar with this bill? Okay, Scott is, a few others. This lowers the age of consent for homosexual relationships between men and boys, or lesbians and young women. So right now in California, if uh, an adult has anal or oral sex, I'm sorry to mention these words, but this is the law, you should know about it. Before this SB 145 passed, or is about to pass, you would go on a registry if you were convicted with having that kind of sexual relationship with a minor. You would go on a list as a sex, a registered sex offender. Now, judges have certain discretion, but that's the list. Well, actually, no discretion for male on male sex. You would go on this list. And if you go to Megan's Law, you can look up your zip code and you will find a list of these registered abusers all over California and the country. This law changes that. So if you're 14 years old and there's less than a 10 year difference between you and the adult that you're having a relationship with, you no longer go on the registered sex offender list. It's up to a judge's discretion. And given the judicial climate in our state today, how often do you think that's going to happen? But even more importantly, what kind of mindset and orthodoxy does this set up in our culture where we're legalizing these kinds of things and where we have these gay straight alignment clubs with adult members coming on our, our public school campuses to indoctrinate kids to get into this lifestyle. There's no hope for our children 
there's simply no hope for our children in the public school system. So I just wanted to make you aware of this so you can be praying about it. Um, SB 40, 145 and AB uh, 2218, they will become law September 30th if Governor Newsom either signs or does nothing. They will automatically become law on October 1st. So you have a little bit of time to go to the governor's office, just go to his website, Governor Newsom, and there's a comment section, and you wanna send him an email or call his phone and urge him to veto, and those are the operative words, veto AB 2218 and SB 145. Um, as you know, I'm a, a part of an organization called Protect Our Kids, and our mission in life is to get the word out to as many concerned parents and citizens in our state and really nation now about what's going on in the school system. And we put out a couple of brochures broch in the past, and they've been fairly tame. I mean, they've, they've been directed, but we haven't shown graphics or anything like that. But I've been convinced recently that we need to get a little bit more emphatic and a little more visual in telling the truth about what's going on in our school system. So this latest brochure that you have in front of you hopefully does just that. It gives you actual curriculum examples of what's being taught in our schools. So I hope this is something that can be of value to you. If you like it, we, uh, we have a modest printing this first time. But if these, um, if these go quickly, we're going to print a lot more of them. So these are difficult times, gentlemen, difficult times, as Richard spoke. So, and, and I so appreciate his focus on um, love, hope, and faith. We need to focus on those things. Please be praying for these issues. It's not about adults anymore. It's about our children. Abraham Lincoln said that the philosophy in the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy in the government in the next. Can you imagine the kind of country that, that we're going to be facing in 20 years if these things are not put to rest? God bless you guys. Okay, uh, let's uh, close in prayer, guys. Father God, what we've heard, whether it's... Uh, about love or whether it's about man's evilness uh, i pray that it would all penetrate our hearts and our minds that we might uh, have an action or you give uh, thoughts to us and out of those thoughts come a, a a feeling and a belief and then we act out of them i pray lord that we would act righteously and we would uh, give our hearts to those who ask us of our opinion let us not be afraid and shy away from the truth and the truth is jesus so, Lord, let us be your warriors and go out in our marketplace, in our homes, and wherever we are, and be strong in our faith. It's the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I ask you to consider to get behind what Mark is trying to do. Let him know you're available to join whatever way you can to help out. It would be just wonderful if everyone knows Calvary Chapel East Anaheim is taking a stand. Where it's going to go, I have no idea. But you have an opportunity, I have an opportunity to take a stand. You won't hear this in other churches, guys. Our senior pastor is letting us be involved in this. So protect our kids. Just give Mark a call and say, I'm with you, or jot him an email. Let him know that we're together in this fight. There's times that we just cannot be silent. And this is one of those times. So I appreciate you being here this morning. Richard, I appreciate your message this morning. I appreciate the fact we've got this videotape because of Robert here. And Mark, I thank you for taking the time to come and be with us. And guys, I love you all very much. We cannot shrink. We've got to stand up and be counted the best we can, okay?
God bless you. Take care.